field artillery has evolved into one of the most feared weapons on the battlefield, increasing its firepower, psychological impact, and its mobility. It wasn't just on land that artillery showed its versatility. It has had to learn how to fly as well as fight. In World War II, guns even took to the skies, taking the battle to the enemy, and a family of air portable hard hitters is born. Artillery had always been quite a flexible arm, and what happened in the Second World War was an extension of that. During the bitter fighting of D-Day and then Operation Market Garden in 1944, Allied airborne units dropped deep behind enemy lines in the drive to the heart of occupied Europe. Once troops are being taken by glider to battle, so some guns were made small enough to fit in gliders. Sending directly to where they're required, six-pounder, 17-pound anti-tank guns, 40 millimeter anti-aircraft guns, and even the 75 millimeter pack howitzer. This highly portable firepower would prove to be invaluable to the airborne infantry, cut off in hostile territory. All the artillery types dropped where they were required to support the beleaguered airborne forces. Leap forward a generation, and we see the legacy of these air portable weapons. In the Vietnam War, artillery had to fly and fight for its life. But with the invention of the helicopter, guns could be delivered to the most difficult of terrain. Time and again, artillery pieces and fire teams were thrown into the thick of the action to provide hardball backup for the infantry. In battles like the Siege of Quezon, it was the artillery that saved the day, providing accurate counter-battery fire and protecting troops. It is artillery that provided that wall of steel that prevented the closure of the enemy. To this day, being able to transport your big guns across country, over the battlefield, even over entire continents, is just as important and can turn the tide of victory.